They're all doing their best. It's such a disaster. Don't do your best, whatever you do. <laughs> That's the opposite of what we get taught, though, in school. Yeah, it's yeah. your education is a disaster. <laughs> no, they teach you not to like failure. I'm sure they did. Yes, oh, absolutely. But you can't learn anything without failing. So they had to teach you, teach you a different attitude towards failure. They teach you to hate it. Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> you're failing. It means you're, we can now teach you because you failed. You can't learn anything without failing. Therefore, we have to change your attitude to failure. So I should fail as quickly as possible? Yes. <laughs> you know, it's, who's it? It's um, oh, the guy who wrote The Natural Way to Draw. Mm -hmm. says you, you, you had to fail 5,000, you had to make 5,000 mistakes before you can begin to draw the live model accurately. That's a lot. Yeah. And no, I think you should make, I'm sure 10. For me, it would be many more. Well, I was in but class. Then, no, but no, but that doesn't mean he's a good teacher. Ah. Then he says, so he gets his students and make them as quickly as possible. Yes, he's a good teacher. He's called Kimon Nicolaides. Of course he's a good teacher. The good teacher says make the mistakes Yeah, quickly. please, you've got to make the mistakes. Yeah. Bad teachers try to prevent them making the mistakes. Well, uh, the whole education system is based on... Uh, don't make mistakes. Don't make and mistakes. And don't fail. Don't fail. Yeah. And yet they know. And when I say you don't learn anything without failing, that's not controversial. <laughs> Everyone knows that. Everybody agrees. Mm -hmm. I think, that, I think I'm different from other people because I stay with problems for years and years. And because when I was aged two days before my ninth birthday, I decided not to believe anything the grown-ups told me. And when my birthday came, I decided, this is two days later, of course, if you're mathematically inclined, mm. I decided to think that the opposite of what they told me might be equally true. And that's been with me all my life, and I think that changed me. It's like, it, it, you get to like cognitive dissonance. You like things that don't make sense, and they don't fit together. And you like unusual ideas, and if, if somebody says something, you immediately think, what's the opposite of this? What is the opposite of what they're saying? It's quite creative. Yeah. So I don't think I got, I don't know, I stopped being intelligent at age 11. For some reasons nobody understands. What does that mean, you stopped being intelligent? I stopped being intelligent. I was the brightest child until I was 11. Maybe and then were you I bored? Was, then I was, I don't know. Oh. And then I was put in the backward stream. If My headmaster shook hands with me in front of the school when I arrived and said, this is our f great future scholar. Oh, that's a lot of pressure. I know, I could, well, because of the test to get into the school. Uh -huh. I must have done amazingly and was immediately bottom of the class. I think I may have hit my head. Or they put too much pressure on you or something. I don't know. I've heard you say in uh, countless classes to groups of improvisers, don't be original. Oh, please, don't be original. Be obvious. Yeah. That's still radical, I think, for a lot of people to hear. Well, there's some, often it's young men are trying to say something that couldn't possibly be in the mind of the audience. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to be weird. <laughs> and, well, if it couldn't possibly be in the mind of the audience, why should they want it? Most of the time you give the audience what they want. J.K. Oh. J. K. Rowling. Yes promises you things. She does. And then when it arrives, it's usually better than what she promised. That's amazing. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. But, she said, but you don't do it in every paragraph. Mm. So most of the time you give the people what they want, and occasionally you give them something better than what they wanted. And she's now one of the richest writers in all time. Yeah. And, but that's what she does. I think, well, again, back to our horrible education, we've, we've all heard things like uh, be original or be creative or come up with a good idea. 
No. But you've always said the opposite. Yeah. If it looks like a good idea, it's outside the circle of probability and it's going to screw up the other improvisers. Would you really enjoy improvising with Robin Williams? No. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think... You see, the, you see the problem. Yeah, he's, he improvises really well alone. Yes. Yeah, or I guess... It, I but guess, could when you... He, when he's not too drugged up. Yeah. And now he's dead, of course, entertaining somebody somewhere. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could improvise with him if you just huh. were his passenger and said yes, yes to everything. Yes, you just say yes to everything. Yeah. But then you're not really improvising with him. No, I guess not. No. Yeah. But he has to be a star. Mm -hmm. I, think the, I think people are taught to avoid the obvious and they end up not being artists. Mozart was obvious. When he says, I, tunes float into my head and if I like them, I write them down. And then that's a good composer. Yeah. Yeah. And, and an effortless composer. Mm 